you just tuning in to Y254? It's okay, it's okay. What you just missed is a couple of uh, stories that we read from the newspaper, but I think you can catch that on at Y254 channel on YouTube because we just, we are just late. I just told you, we are late. Okay, okay. I had a very embarrassing experience this morning, but I don't think I want to tell it right now. But uh, I'm emotional. <laughs> Hashtag is why in the morning, me to Val, or at color me Val. It's time, it's about that time rather, for a strength of a woman. Last week, strength of a woman was a man, but we have been trying to uplift the boy child. So, see uh, at new mama, no, 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 we are just uplifting boy child are we together hashtag is why the morning so let me allow the phenomenal woman to introduce herself good morning good morning to you how are you fine thank you you Indeed. look fantastic um, thank you you look beautiful more than you the way you have the cutting and i like it and then a dress and even a jacket you you're also very smart swag. but i'm wondering aren't you feeling cold imagine not so much the studio has Eat. Yeah, but when you get outside there, mm -hmm. you will regret. But I know you have a jersey somewhere. Yes. Okay. I, I, I came prepared. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. yeah. Modern problems require modern solutions. Yes. Please introduce yourself. Uh, my name is Florence Wambui Mwange. Florence is a married woman with three bio biological children and 42 adopted ones. I run a rescue center called Destiny Rescue Center. Uh, it is in uh, Embakasi, sub-county, a place called Nazra Gardens Estate. Currently, I have uh, 20, 42 children. It is a mixture of uh, destitute children and teenage mothers. Uh, Florence is married, uh, is a happy woman, and I love what I do. It shows, though. Yeah, it shows. I love what I do. I have a question, just very off topic. Yeah? We mm -hmm. have a question on our Facebook page. Please go there, 254 Things. Mm -hmm. uh, we are asking, why do people break promises? Or, or why do people make promises and then break them? I love when you smoke comments. <laughs> people at who make, com uh, make promises, do you are liars, do you are what? But... I, help me understand. Isn't just even marriage a promise? Promise before God and witnesses and uh -huh. the person you're getting married to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> help me understand. Are all promises meant to be broken? No, a promise is not meant to be broken. Mm -hmm. I think it's just that people do not purpose to keep the promises. They're not very intentional. They're not very intentional. Because as, far, as much as you face challenges, you're supposed to deal with the challenges, not with the promise. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to overcome the challenges so that you can be able to keep your promise. Mm -hmm. So people need to be committed, intentional, so that you can be able to keep promises. Because some of them are very hard to keep, mm -hmm. but you made a vow. Okay, so the problem is not with the promise. Oh, I think maybe the pr problem is we make promises assuming there'll never be a challenge. There'll yes. never be... There'll never be hindrances a a along the way. Mm -hmm. You just think you make a promise and then it continues like that. Effortlessly. Effortlessly. But you, you need to realize that there are people who are fighting that promise or rather your destiny. Mm -hmm. You know, your promise can very easily, the promises can very easily lead you to your destiny. Mm -hmm. So you need to be intentional. You need to know and be ready for whatever comes so that you can fight to be called a promise keeper. Mm. Yes. I like that. That's deep. But I'm thinking maybe we should have you on another segment sometime. That wisdom I'm should, available. should be spread. I'm available. I'm Nagani, my friends. Yeah, that what you just said has resonated. I will keep it. Mm -hmm. Anyway, now that we're talking about destiny, please tell me how you figured out or what, what point in your life did you realize your destiny was to have the center? Uh, I think I can say it was from a very early age because during my... When I was a young girl, hmm. now I'm an old woman, yeah? No, you're not. I am. <laughs> you're not. Stop it. I have continued. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I started uh, getting connected to children that have issues in their lives. For example, even in school, I could tell the children who do not have anything to eat. When I went to secondary school, I could know the children who did not have probably enough soap. And again, I also, I think I also attract uh, children or people who, who need a shoulder to lean on. 
So I can say that uh, my life uh, revolves around children. Mm -hmm. Because I think by the time I was in class 7, I was a Sunday school teacher. Wow. Yes, I was a Sunday school teacher. I used to do a lot. I used to assist a lot. And then even in class, I used to be a person who wants to volunteer to do things. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I like, I like helping. What's in it for you? Because apparently in this life, someone must get something from doing Fulfillment. Something. Wow. Yes. That's nothing tangible at all. It is to me. Really? Because when I see a child that I have rescued smile, mm -hmm. and let me give an example. I've rescued a child who is two days. Mm -hmm. Wow. And then all al now he's seven years. It gives me a lot of fulfillment. Just to see that child has a life, has a future, and he has hope as young as he is. Now to my other part, what I do, I rescue teenage mothers. When I rescue a teenage mother who is 10 mm -hmm. with a kid, and this child comes, these are two children, mm -hmm. and we walk, she's able now to love the child, take care of the child. I think even if you would pay me, it will not give me the fulfillment than to see the joy in this child's heart. And that the child has taken a path that will change her destiny. What does day-to-day -day running of the center look like? Uh, I, do I use the word hectic? Not really, <laughs> uh, but it is because you realize that I've told you we are dealing with two children. So the mother needs to be parented mm -hmm. as she parents. And she's parenting at a very tender age whereby she doesn't even, she has not even been parented probably halfway of her life. Mm -hmm. So it's a world that she's very new to very challenging and uh, now you have to take this child holistically because you have to deal with her emotions also these children are mostly in a lot of pain because it's a culture okay most of the teenage mothers are from the Maasai culture mm -hmm. so they go through FGM when they are very young so they've not forgotten about the pain of the FGM now they are married and they are already mothers mm -hmm. so Barbara, when we wake up we have chores like now that they are not in school, mm -hmm. but most of them is to teach them how to parent these children and to love the children. Mm -hmm. Because I don't think there is a child who is 12, 11, 10 years old who will have that love for that baby. And it's a baby that they didn't want. It's a forced thing. Mm -hmm. So most of them have no value for those children. And we have to make sure that they mother these children with love because as much as they will mother them with a lot of rejection the children will experience rejection in their lives so we have to be very positive with these girls we do a lot of counseling to them we do a lot of talking and i think bottom line is just give them love give them love 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 because it's very very challenging to have a child when you're 10 years it's very challenging Honestly, I think it's challenging to have a child, period. Seeing as how sijas are, yeah. I don't know, I just hear. Yeah. Tell me, isn't it difficult to give something that you don't have, that you, we, we would expect them to be, this is before they've come to you. Mm -hmm. <coughs> is this emotional or just, I don't know, I think my voice is deciding to go somewhere. <laughs> yes, so it must be very difficult to be expected to raise a child when you yourself have not actually been raised you just grew yeah yeah it is so it's 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 almost it sounds near impossible to mm -hmm. tell me to love something well i have no love in me yes how do i give what i don't have uh -huh. now that is why i said you have to parent mm -hmm. the mother you have to because it's not that they don't have that love it's only that it was shattered when things were done in a very negative way in their lives. Mm -hmm. So you can resurrect that love in them. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's something that is so, uh, I think it's just psychological, because this child grew in this girl, and there's uh, an attachment that is not just because it's a child. There's an attachment, I, I call it a divine attachment, because a child is a gift from God. So there is a divine attachment to, uh, between the child and the mother. So you only need to be positive, you only need to be intentional that you're going to help this child connect to that baby. 
because it's they they, they realize that actually I tell them we don't have a choice we mm -hmm. have to love this child mm -hmm. we have to you have to mother this child so you teach them how to be a mother now how you can theoretically and then the rest it will come from within so it is something that you need to touch in the life of this child you need to touch the inner being you need to touch that you need to reawaken and work with this child so that the pain of how the short life has turned to be that she will see there's something positive hmm. someone who's 10 years old has lived three lives eh. There's some circumstances I can't imagine myself in, but mm -hmm. there's someone who's so, so much younger than me and who's yes. braving it. Yes. Hey! You say, Nj, we celebrate you today. So our, mm, Asante. You, you, you can be our woman. Woman Crush Wednesday. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's a thing. Yeah. It's even as a hashtag. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. yeah. All right. So tell me about, you mentioned someone that you saved two days of age, mm -hmm. which is wow. Would you like to tell me that story? Like what happened? Where did you find this child? Uh, the child was dumped in a dump site. And uh, I think it's um, the street boys who live near the dump site that saved the baby. They went and called a woman in a nearby slum. And they told him, Kuna mtoto pale na tujui kama amekufa. So the woman rushed there found the baby wrapped it was raining because i think it was in april Aww. so the woman took the baby went and changed and a very funny story because whatever is she's an old woman she didn't have any baby clothes so whatever was in the house is what she wrapped the baby in and then gave the baby some little milk and took the baby to the police station the police station to the hospital now between the police and the hospital that is when now i was called Yes. Oh, you're like a reference. Yeah. Oh, I, yes. I was imagining there's a lot of red tape mm -hmm. when people run away or you find vulnerable children mm -hmm. when you now want to take care of them. There's no red tape. There's no one who gives you heartache, headaches. Do you have to sign what? Do you have to do what? No, there's Where? a process. What is the process? And it has to be followed. Mm -hmm. Because you realize this woman, you, you take the child to the police station, you're given an OB number. Then you take the child to the hospital, then to the children's office, or to the chief, or any administration office. But the, uh, the child will end up in the children's office, because that is the department that takes care of children. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's a process that has to be followed, but the immediate thing is to save this life. And you realize that sometimes you need to save life following mm -hmm. the protocols. Mm -hmm. But when you rescue a child, I think, uh, you, we organize the police station the, the, with the condition of the child then to the hospital mm -hmm. so that now you can be told this child is there is no problem, it needs to be checked because there is nothing, nothing you know about this child and like when you rescue an infant there is a lot of things that need to be checked mm -hmm. so you, you follow the process depending on the circumstance because if you, you rescue a child who is probably battered you will not, as much as you need to go to the police station, which is the thing you're supposed to do. Initially, it is easier for you to go to the police station so that now you can be referred from the police station. Oh. Yes. I did not know our system was so elaborate. I'm, I'm quite surprised. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, seven years later, how is this child faring on now? A very handsome baby boy. Oh. Yeah, a very happy child. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's why I, to, I told you, for mm -hmm. me, it is fulfillment. Mm -hmm. If I remember the, the way I picked that child, and I see him today, I see a walking miracle. Yes. I hope he has no memory, or no recollection of being left. He was two days. Yeah. Yeah. Good, good, good. Yeah. Does he ask, where are my parents, where am I from? What are the answers that you give? Um, now, this child mm -hmm. knows nobody else. Oh, yes. so you're basically mom. Yeah, I'm basically mom. And yeah, you have forty two children. Uh, yes, but we have to walk a journey whereby we are going to discuss what happened. Because number one, if he gets to know from somebody else, it will be told in the wrong way. Mm -hmm. And this child might be uh, wounded. So you have to prepare this child 
in a way that you're not going to hurt his feelings, you're going to let him know the truth, mm -hmm. that he may even be able to accept himself. So it's a process. Because you don't just drop the bombshell, kulienda mm hivi. -hmm. You have to keep seeing whether this child is ready. And I must, I must confess that sometimes I also need a counselor. Because it's not also very easy for me to break such news. Mm -hmm. So I need to be prepared also. Mm -hmm. Because if it turns out negative, I also need somebody to work with me. So it's, it's a place whereby you cannot do everything on your own. You have to network. You have three biological children. Yes. Do they support your cause? Very much. Yeah? Yes. How? The, the most important thing is that my family supports what I do and they love what I do. Mm -hmm. So that makes it very, very easy for me to do what I'm doing. Because you will find all these children probably in my house. We have, we just feel that they need to come and celebrate Christmas with us. Aww. Yes. Wanana kwa shosho. Wanakuja tunakula Christmas and even financial support. Mm -hmm. Then uh, the other thing is the freedom that my husband has given me that I can do what I am doing without usifanya hi, unafanya hi. He has given me freedom mm -hmm. to do what I am doing. And that makes it very, very easy. Because I don't have to be worried that I'm going home at nine and I have come from the children's home. I have, actually I can even very easily call me. Nimemaliza venye likuwa nafanya kwa munipik. So the, the support from my family is very important to me because it makes my heart and my work very easy. Probably, even if I may not look at the financial support, that freedom and accepting what I am doing, accepting these children as to my children as their brothers and sisters and to my husband as his children, it gives me a lot of joy. Mm. So I want to tell them that I appreciate them, I love them, because of holding my hands. Mm, that was a family knit in heaven. Yes. Like your cause, and then all that came, and then you had children who also just are in line with the cause. Uh huh. So, and actually, not even by, not, not only my family, mm -hmm. even my other family members, mm -hmm. like my parents, they're both alive. Mm. Wow. They love what I do, mm -hmm. they love the children. Even my other, my aunties, my cousins, they are, there's a group that has really appreciated what I am doing. Mm -hmm. So it now becomes a big family that I may not be, like now if I want to go home, I, I may not have to tell my dad I'm going home. I only need to let him know mm -hmm. I'm going home with uh, these children. Mm -hmm. It's not that if I don't tell him I won't go, mm -hmm. but he will not give me a hard time. Mm -hmm. He really appreciates what I am doing. And so does my mom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, And they call them Shosho and Guka. Wow, I'd like to see like a, a picture of, of Christmas in uh -huh. your household. It, uh -huh. it sounds like a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Children running around. Running everywhere. around. Sometimes <laughs> they, they want to sleep and they, they carry their mattresses. You know, I don't have that kind of mattresses. Mm -hmm. They carry their mattresses and we spread them everywhere. And then my son has a problem because the boys have to put up in his room. Mm -hmm. But we do it. It's only for a short time. Just to give them joy and let them feel appreciated. So that they don't feel that they belong in a certain place. They need also to be exposed. Mm. Yes. My favorite thing about everything you're doing is you're giving them hope. Mm -hmm. You're loving someone who maybe does not even understand the concept of love. Yes. The first time I encountered like pure, pure love and it was not from my immediate family, my nuclear family. I was so surprised. Like, what's wrong with you? Uh -huh. Why are you being so nice to me? Mm -hmm. What do you want? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey, it, it surprised me. <laughs> so I think in turn, sometimes I feel like I, I must give back. I must give back some of the love that was given to me. It was given to me for no reason. Mm -hmm. They did not ask anything from me. They just loved me. Mm -hmm. And thank you for doing that. Mm -hmm. So I do here we have a couple of pictures from or rather of the rescue center. So maybe if you can take a look at that. Remember it's at White Five on Facebook, White Five channel on Twitter, hashtag is why in the morning. If I may ask, because it's boggling my mind a little bit, mm -hmm. how do you financially keep the rescue center afloat? Uh -huh. A good question. 
because we rely on well wishes. Mm -hmm. We rely on well wishes. Uh, and I must say that it's, it's God who commands people to come. Sometimes they come when you're not expecting. So our work is uh, supported by well wishers. Uh, and that is how we run and we are able to, uh, to keep these children going. Mm -hmm. yes. What are we looking at over here? Uh, this was a medical camp. Mm -hmm. uh, some doctor from, uh, doctors from Kenyatta National Hospital volunteered to come and do a medical checkup for to our children. Mm -hmm. And it was very interesting. It was very good for me because I got to know their health and most of them were dentists mm -hmm. but they also did a general uh, what do i call it uh, checkup check mm -hmm. yes and then we have a group that uh, does mentorship on mental health mm -hmm. during this time of covid i realized that these children are uh, one they were very disappointed because their dreams looked like nilikuwa nimepata mahali pa kusoma Sasa imekatizwa. And to the teenage mothers especially, they thought that they will be taken back to their homes because that, that was the directives from the government. But again, even if we are taking those children, we need to know where we are taking them. So they, emotionally they went down. And even being in a place where, you know, there was no movement, no visitors, nothing. So we were just in the center. Mm -hmm. So I realized that they needed some encouragement more than what I give. So that is, that is what I, when I met the, these guys from Mental uh, Health Kenya mm -hmm. and they are doing a lot of, they are still working with the children. So even the counseling part of it, because they, are, they have counselors in them, they teach them skills, they talk to them and it really changed their minds their whole life according to the way they were looking at the COVID-19 issue mm -hmm. and then they get a reassurance that you're not going back and you'll still go back to school. I like that. Yes. I mean, and though and mental then, health is important, eh, mm -hmm. we'll get back to that. Yes. What are we looking at here now? Now these are probably the donations that we get from different people. Mm -hmm. You can see they look at it holistically. Mm -hmm. They will bring food, they will bring milk, they will bring farm produce, clothes, and diapers for the young babies. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot, we receive a lot from, uh, the, apart from the financial bit, we also receive uh, in kind. Mm -hmm. Yes. This is a very important kind of kind, isn't yeah, it? Because this helps us to be able to feed these children very well. Mm -hmm. They, carrot. So you see, they are, we are able to keep uh, the balanced diet for these children. Mm -hmm. And then the clothes, they are, they, we, sometimes we even have clothes that we, we share with other uh, institutions. Such as? Clothes, even food. Sometimes we have a lot of food. Sometimes we have a lot of food and we need, yes. Yani, you're being blessed double double Let until it is you. overflowing. You are Let even giving. You. I have been distributing food during this time of COVID. What? Yes, in Kajiado and even in Nairobi mm -hmm. to widows, the needy families, the teenage mothers. Because even in Nairobi, we have teenage mothers that are living with their parents. And I realized that Nisemetu Hivi, they are burdened because Tunakulea na umetuletea mungine. So what our wana hitaji watu wenye wana wa encourage, even encouraging the parents, uyu msichana asiolewe, kama tunaeza mrudisha shule, wacha asome kwanza alafu wataolewa badai. Ata tuhatuendangi ya tiwa, uyu kijana, uh -uh, we don't even go there. I just want this girl to go back to school. And then I distribute sanitary towels. That's important. Yes, very, very important. Mm -hmm. Because I've realized it's a very... It's a commodity that is very important. Especially when I go to Kajiado, 